we, we touched on agoraphobia. I want to get right at that. When, when I pitched this idea for this whole conversation we're having to the Brother Be Well team, I was surprised by um, a colleague of mine with Brother Be Well immediately said to me, he said, Mike, I think you're right on the money. I am afraid to go outside lately. And I probed a little bit, and I would you wouldn't necessarily know that talking to this individual, but 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 that individual said he is increasingly afraid to go outside. It's more and more of an effort. So I did a little research on agoraphobia. Um, reported incidents are up, diagnoses are up with the increase in shelter in place and stay at home orders. And there's a lot of research that says that social isolation, as both of you know, loneliness leads to poor mental health and to poor physical health. So let's talk about it. Have have both of you or either of you seen an increase in the number of people you're treating that that are it, it just really paralyzed me. I've, I've not reached that point yet, but I can see it's a continuum. And with with some of the data coming out, you see the you get barraged by the media and all the numbers with regard to regard to COVID. I, I could see an individual beginning to shut down. And when this friend of mine said, I'm afraid to go outside, it just really touched me. So I wanted to talk about it today. Have you guys seen an increase in the people that you're treating, the number of people you're treating for agoraphobia? There's there's definitely been an increase in individuals who are reporting symptoms of agoraphobia. Um, but I think um, to, in addition to that, um, there's also an increase of individuals who are really having a difficult time deciphering between anxiety and agoraphobia. Mm. So... Um, so that's really been a, 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 a work in, in progress for many clients and patients to really um, help them understand if they're experiencing, you know, a pre-existing um, general anxiety episode versus actually going through a series of agoraphobia. And what and, and usually the reason for agoraphobia is the anxiety of, about not feeling safe in, uh, out in public or feeling like something's going to harm you. Um, and it's more about being in a crowd or in a subway or roaring a you can't get out or maybe you'll have a heart attack and, and die. So one, mm. one of the uh, triage processes is really um, doing an assessment to find out what are they, what they're afraid of. Are they afraid of going out in public and catching the virus or are they going, are they afraid of going out and maybe experiencing one of the preexisting uh, symptoms, uh, which is, you know, just the general idea of not feeling safe in public. So really deciphering that for, uh, for patients is, is helpful. Um, and then you're able to work with them, um, it, within that um, spectrum. And also when you're looking at the actual populations um, in, uh, uh, in cultures, for example, the Hmong culture for the first uh, six months um, of the uh, pandemic, uh, once the shelter in place occurred, there was an increasing rate of the Hmong, pop the elderly Hmong population um, uh, experiencing uh, extreme isolation because of the message that you can't go outside. So it also comes down to messaging. Are we, are we providing the correct messaging you know, uh, within the community um, and letting these individuals know that, yes, um, shelter in place is in order. However, you can still go outside and go for a walk or you can still exercise. You can ride your bike with a mask on. So these are some of the the, uh, the messaging um, efforts that are going on within the small community business organizations to really um, dispel a lot of the myths um, that are really contributing to uh, individuals um, experiencing agoraphobia. I, I really appreciate you making the distinction between um, agoraphobia symptoms and how that manifests itself and a, a more general anxiety. I really appreciate that. And that, that helps me out as a lot as I'm doing some more research uh, for Brother Be Well. Um, Cherie, what are your thoughts about that? Increase in people, the number of people that are afraid to go outside? Um, I think I was showing up for us in healthcare is um, sometimes persons are not coming in for care until it has really reached a point where now they're coming in for emergency services. Wow. Um, so you start to see things like the the rates of um, diagnosis of certain cancers and, and other issues decreasing. And you think, um, are those things decreasing or are they decreased because people aren't actually coming in to be diagnosed? So um, my worry as a healthcare professional in general is that um, those people that come in at the very first sign of something are now coming in um, further down the line and having more complex medical issues because of their fear for coming in. So it's one of those things where, you know, we've yet to see the total impact of this pandemic because um, all the people that it would have come in for the, their preventative care or would come in at the first sign of an issue um, that may not ever come in at all or come in when it's too late. So I think mm. we're seeing more of that um, than just people purely um, 
coming out saying that they're afraid to come. They're just not showing up. Wow. Uh, you know, just a quick type about before we get into this next question, I you reminded me, Sheree, of a conversation I had with the president of your organization, Carter Todd. I've lived my entire life for most of my life with kind of a a low grade fear of doctors and hospitals. It all dates back to a, a childhood experience of mine. I, I won't get into that because I'll need the tissue in front of you guys. So I won't get into it. But I've managed that for my entire life. And for my entire life, until two weeks ago, I assumed that medical professionals would have no idea of what I was dealing with there. And I was talking to Carter Todd, and he said, are you kidding me? I'm terrified when I have to go to the doctor because if anything else, we're on the inside. So so it's a complete, it's a, it's a fallacy that we're not dealing with the same things you're dealing with. And in fact, we might have it even more. So I have to tell you that, that if nothing else, when I have make my next doctor's appointment, I'm going to be a little more at ease knowing it's not just me, even the medical professionals have some level of apprehension of anxiety when they've got to seek medical treatment. So thanks a lot. Just a little sidebar. I had to mention that. 